DC the Don is finally getting what he deserves. He recently made the Double XL Freshman class, and while you can argue that the Double XL Freshman class has fallen off, it's still an accomplishment to get on there regardless. But DC's story differs from many others, and here's why. Lots of artists get onto the Double XL Freshman class after a year or two of making good music, but DC the Don has been making high quality music since 2018. His story really shows that while hard work does pay off, sometimes it takes longer than we'd like for it to. Anyways, in today's video, I want to discuss DC see the Don's continuous grind before reaching the double XL freshman class. So like I mentioned before, DC differed from a lot of other artists because he'd been making good music since 2018. I think that around the time he dropped DC Dahmer, he had really started to become a talented artist. Sure, music is subjective and y'all can say that his early stuff was trash, but if you pay attention to what most people who listened to those projects had to say, they did like those projects. And also, if y'all think music is subjective, y'all are wrong, and here's why. See, I am the hip-hop overlord. Everything that I say is the answer. I'm just messing with y'all. Or am I? But anyways, he was dropping music that the general public liked, but there was one issue. It just wasn't getting the exposure. At the time, the music scene was so unique. Everything was blowing up through social media. DC just needed a few songs to take off so that he could get some big attention, but despite dropping good music consistently, his music was just not hitting the general public. In a situation like this, it's really easy to get demotivated, but DC persevered and he continued to stay consistent for his fans. Now, even though he wasn't getting big attention, he was doing something else in the progress. That was establishing an underground fanbase, and because of this, people were claiming he was next up. The discovery of his music was leading to him gaining more of an audience, and it seemed that his fate could truly turn around. But soon, DC's struggles increased exponentially. In 2019, he was unfortunately hindered due to label issues. See, he was signed to a family-owned label known as Run Music LLC, and he was in a very bad contract deal. One thing led to another, and eventually he was unable to put music onto DSPs like Apple Music and Spotify. He was stuck in this contract for a year and a half, and because of it, he even had to scrap one of his projects, Stop Being So Nice. Now judging by the songs from the album that leaked later on, and the ones that were later released, this seemed like a body of work that DC The Dawn put a lot of effort into. Having an entire project that you worked really hard on scrapped is just not fair. Now in a situation like this, many would have given up and would have let their music career falter, but DC didn't. Despite being small and having no industry support, he would continue to persevere and get his name out there. He couldn't drop music officially? Well, he leaked his own music. His efforts led to him being approached by a new label that helped him with the situation. As of 2020, he was signed to a new label titled Rostrum Records and was able to release music once again. Now here's what makes this situation so astonishing. Many upcoming artists have their careers sabotaged or even end over contractual obligations, but DC persevered and mitigated those issues. However, these label issues still set him back and slowed down his come-up progress. For all we know, he could have blown up by now if this didn't happen. Also, he still had one more issue, the lack of mainstream support. But instead of wallowing over missed opportunities, he grinded. In August of 2020, he dropped his first studio album. This album, titled Come As You Are, is one of the best albums that dropped in that year looking back at it. And you know what came out that year? We had Eternal Take, Whole Lotta Red, Lobo 3, Savage Mode 2, My Turn, and many more. And this album was just as good as a lot of those. However, here's how this project differed. Come As You Are did not get anywhere near the amount of attention as a lot of those other projects. And you know how people say history repeats itself? Well, same thing happened in February 2021 where he dropped his next project, My Own Worst Enemy. A project which really showcased his versatility and was even conceptual with him displaying two personas in the project. It was a strong project, but like all of his previous work, it did not get the attention it deserved. Also, quick hot take. In 2021, he should have made the Double XL freshman list. As talented as the list was, he had a small fan base and he could have definitely held his own in that class. However, he didn't give up and he kept grinding. He continued to drop numerous singles for the rest of 2021 and 2022 with some great songs like Zombieland, Notice Me, and Suicide. That, and he ended 2022 off strong. In December, he dropped a mixtape titled Sacred Heart. This again was a fire tape and honestly has some of my favorite DC songs. I love when he jumps into that melodic trap bag and here we got some amazing songs like Beyond Globo, Shut Up, and NASCAR. 
Now, I could say that he didn't get attention with this either, but at this point, I would have repeated the same few words about 50 times in one video. But yeah, he continued this year by dropping his highly anticipated album Funeral in May, which again showed his versatility. Now, Funeral differed from his other projects. How, you may ask? Well, it was more of a dance-centered album, which was definitely not something that I expected DC to do, but I'm glad he did. Now, dance music is really easy to latch onto. Just look at Uzi's Just Wanna Rock. With a dance album, he would have had to blow up, right? Well... See, in my opinion, Hate the New You would have blown up like crazy if an artist who's big had dropped it, and I feel this song should have blown up on TikTok, but I guess DC hasn't been lucky yet. However, his continued grind finally did pay off later in the year. While he still didn't have a song that blew up, he had finally made the XXL list in June of 2023. Yes, he made it onto the list that he was robbed from not once, but twice. What makes the situation even more sick was that he was voted in for the 10th spot. This meant that XXL did not pick for him to be on it, but they gave fans the option to vote for who they want, and he won. It really goes to show that him building up his fan base over the years would finally pay off. Now, DC The Dawn's story really shows that all you gotta do is stay on your grind. A lot of people who make music expect to blow up overnight. Is it possible? Yes, but here's the truth. More times than not, artists grind for years before blowing up, and DC The Dawn is a peak example of that. Obviously, making it onto the XXL freshman list isn't what I would call blowing up. However, to me, this is monumental for any artist that's on the verge of blowing up, and I personally see a lot of growth for DC The Dawn from here on out. But anyways, do you guys think that DC The Dawn will continue to blow up? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, drop a like. If you want to see another motivational hip-hop video of mine, hit that video on the end screen. And if you're into hip-hop in general, hit that sub button. Later, homies. I got a bag and I'm out my way. Fucking your bitch and she out my way. Fucking a bitch, she a dime, but she ride in my way. Partying all my life from the night to the day.